Welcome to a show about things you can see Without going far and a lot of them are free If you thought there was nothing in the old heartland You ought to hit the black op with these fools in a van Look out, they're driving hard Checking out art in their own backyard Randy does the steering so he won't hurl Mike's got the mad such a man of the world That's done with the camera kind of heavy on his shoulder And that giant ball of tape it's a world record holder Look out, they're driving hard Checking out art in their own backyard Look out, they're driving hard Checking out the world in their own backyard Checking out the world in their own backyard. The principal heard you were coming, uh -oh. and he's gone across the street. <laughs> Dear TV Mailbag, are we late for class? Hi, Don the Camera Guy here, summoned to the Holy Cross Lutheran School by an 8th grade science class to prove that our ball of videotape is indeed the world's largest. Hello! Whoa. Innocent as they may appear, their plan is to dethrone us. And sure enough, the moment of truth has now arrived. Oh! Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Oh, we've been watched! No, it's not looking good, but TV weasels being what they are, they're taking core samples and all kinds of weights and measures and dubious data, and it still comes out the same. Bad. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We've been whooped in every direction. Whooped in every direction. Now I could bring up child labor laws and standardized tests, but that would be wrong. Besides, John, the evil genius behind all this, maintains we have only ourselves to blame. And after I saw your episode where you went to the wheel drive-in, there you sat at that wonderful counter, held that Goober burger in your hand and looked at it and said, no, I don't think I can eat this. I knew then that you had to go down. Zebra! Not only humiliating, it means more work, too. Now we'll have to change the song. Hit it, Kelly. As Don with the camera kind of heavy on his shoulder, that giant ball of tape is not a world record holder. Look out. So off we go into the wilds of northwest Missouri, where no one knows our shame, and where it appears Randy doesn't quite know where he's headed either. Uh, you know, I think we just passed it. Really? Well, I saw something pretty interesting in a yard back there. Yeah. Looked like a yard sale. stone thing. Yeah, probably was it, Mikey. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't want to shout, but I'm pretty sure we just drove right by it. Yes, Randy is a master of going past her, and what he went past this time is right here in Bill Crabb's front yard, a monument to his late wife, Virginia, that actually does bear her earthly remains. <laughs> Had you seen a castle with somebody's ashes in it before? No. Oh, it's just an idea I come up with. I was looking through a magazine and saw that castle of Walt Disney. And I thought, that's it. So now your, your wife's taking the big trip to Disney World, kind of. Uh -huh. She's kind of taking the big trip to Disney World there. <laughs> Now, people around Kidder must have thought that was unusual when you put Virginia's ashes out oh, front. Oh, well, they think that what Bill Crabb does is unusual anyway. Bill gathered the rocks for this from all over the world. And we would have looked longer, but that rain has come to stay. So now we're looking for lunch instead. And Mike says, how about Gallatin? Gallatin, oh Gallatin. We can go to McDonald's, then I say, no way. And he says, not that one. McDonald's Tea Room, where Duncan Hines himself used to love stopping. Just not lately. Sorry, closed. We're closed. Perhaps another cafe we'll have to do, Donnie. Perhaps I'm just pessimistic, but this vegetarian suspects that the resulting grilled cheese will be the first of many to come. 
Still, you gotta have fuel to do what these producers want me to do. And I suppose that's what the big pump was all about as well. Standing for years in Maryville till King City decided they wanted it worse. So now it's out here for us to drive by, and having driven by it, we're heading on up the road into Iowa for more grilled cheese sandwiches and at least one more hard to shoot in the rain photo off. I'm standing on one of the streets of Stanton, Iowa, where Virginia Christine, Mrs. Olson, was born. Perhaps she grew up here. Her formative years formed in the shadow of this very water tower. You guys are out of ideas, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> You're out of coffee, ideas, and it'd be a better show if you were out of film. She's guiding us to the fountain. Now to the naked eye, it might appear we're merely circling John Brown Park, but the boys assure me we're actually taking care of some unfinished business here in Humboldt. Seems that fountain in the middle is a Doberstein. That is, built by the same Catholic priest who gave us that mega site in West Bend, the Grotto of the Redemption, that knocked our socks off some years ago. Whoa, right there, Don's got a shot from, oh. Now yeah, got right, the tree, the tree right, in front right in the way. That's perfect. Here's the deal. Father Doberstein, you know, he built this fountain as a memorial to Faye Hessian, a young girl from Humboldt. The marble statue in the center of the fountain is a statue of Faye. Doberstein, I mean, he was just a building maniac, you know? Because while he's building, you know, how many miles away? 30 miles away. Huge, huge thing. Yeah, Still got was... time to just run over and toss off one of these. Well, he's making this stuff in the wintertime in the basement, as I recall, over there at the church, and then shipping it out and having it installed on site. And uh, you know, you can see that with the lines, I think, you know, it's put in, in in sections. Do not be fooled. Most of what these guys sound like they know is coming from a book. In this case, a particularly fine one by Lisa Stone, which we recommend heartily. In fact, from it, we've learned of yet another small piece of Dobersteiniana close by. A World War II memorial in Old Rolf, not to be confused with New Rolf, which, believe me, is confusing enough to make trying to find it an adventure in itself. Here's the memorial right here. First Pocahontas County Courthouse site. Look, Donnie, it's the war memorial. There was, there was something, you know, we weren't just making it up. We weren't just driving around endlessly on Iowa country roads for absolutely nothing. You probably whipped this out in about an hour. Technical term for this would be the big honking piece of petrified wood. That's what this is all about, peace. Give big honking peace a chance. It was about this time that an almost biblical plague of gnats spurred us to go back to the grotto to remind ourselves why it's sometimes called the eighth wonder of the world. And while we're at it, make a few impulse purchases at the gift shop. What'd you get? I got grotto playing cards, yeah. for, only for playing old maid. Hi. Whoa. Here's that, here's that receipt to charge the station. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, how could you resist? Your little grotto, there it is, snow there it is. the grotto. Look snow into the grotto. And just like that, our time in Iowa is over, chasing the pilot car right on up to the south side of Minnesota. And oh my goodness, has my luck actually oh. changed? Are we a brewery or something? The Shell Brewery, that's the second oldest. Man, let's go. Forget about eating. Some tasty adult beverages would just hit the spot. Look, they've even got a museum of brewing. Oh, but look. Oh, but, look what time it is. Oh, we got to get going. Hurry up. What are you doing? Come on. Wait. Oh, wait for me. Hit that dead branch. Looks oh. like another dream oh. deferred. Don't think I won't forget it. Hop on in. Though the truth is, we need to make it to Darwin to see their prized possession while the sun still shines. There's your damn water tower. Yes, it's the other big ball of twine. Not as large or as heavy as our hero in Kansas, but in the books no. with an asterisk nonetheless. By one man. That man was Francis Johnson, and when he was done winding, 
His ball ended up with a mailbox, sunroom, and even a song by Weird Al Yankovic sung about it. Oh, listen, you can smell the aroma. Oh, that smells like my grandfather's barn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, he, he was a nice guy? Sure he was. Yeah. Tell us about him. Well, I didn't know him real well. He's an eccentric. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to conduct a television interview. <laughs> <laughs> this is all done? By hand. By hand. By hand. This started with two fingers. Can you show me how? He had yeah. to tie a knot every time. He had a, ja uh, what, a railroad jack, he'd jack it up. Inside wind it around it. After it got so large, then he couldn't roll it anymore, and then he used an old box cart jack. Is it okay if I drink coffee around the ball? Yeah. Well, Ripley's, believe it or not, they came from Canada, and they wanted to take the ball of twine home with them. Yes. Because Francis, they said Francis had promised them that he, they could have it when he died. They didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so then after that, they had one built. That's had... not fair. That's like, that's like getting the eighth graders from the local school to work on Oh, a big ball of videotape. Big ball of videotape, yeah. let's say, for like three years. You can see where this is headed, can't you? The International Brotherhood of Big Ball Runner-Ups meets here. I feel camaraderie right here. <laughs> and all of a sudden, second place doesn't look so bad after all. Can you say loophole? Yeah, right. loophole. Is there real twine or plastic twine? Mm -hmm. One day. Don't you think it'd be better if the hanging plants were hanging, Don? Where I come from, they, yeah, they maybe, should be. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's a Minnesota thing to just leave them on the ground. But do you think the yellow's better here, or should I move? This one's kind of leggy, I think, anyway. Ready? Should we go make some television? Should we enlighten America about more of the cool things that are out there if you get off the main roads? Is it time? Yeah. Time to go so. make a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> That's my clever way of telling you our next destination, though the exact location of the molehill cannot be revealed. While it defies easy explanation, it can be described as a garden of granite grown by one Louis Whipping. Louis followed theosophy. In fact, he even wrote a book about it, which, had we read it, might help explain what we're seeing. For Louis, there was uh, reincarnation was an important part of it and the combination of various religions, of Christianity, of, of, of Eastern religions, of Native American religions. And he spent a lot of time writing, too. He would write these long articles and then send them off to Chicago. As far as I know, he was rejected. Uh, every, everything he sent in was sent back. I think he only made it to the third grade, and I don't know if he finished. Uh, but he was really... A genius. Can you imagine putting this stone up 60 or 70 years ago with no hydraulics? It had to be jacked or levered. And how do you get it in here? He had lots of help from neighborhood kids, and uh, he paid them a pittance, but he paid them. One of the first things he did was to put, make that stone wall, and my uncle helped him haul the field stone in for that. He said, I could never figure out what he was going to build. <laughs> but he just kept on going. Can you imagine how beautiful this was full of water? Look at this place. Because that was all a pond. Those were stepping stones across. You know, and he made it all out of cast off, throwaway stuff. You know, if you look at most of the pieces, they got flaws in them. Like there's a knot there, you know, you wouldn't be able to use that. Or here's a dark spot. and. Uh, you know, this crystal going through there. Most of this stuff is all stuff that had some type of flaw in it that you couldn't use in a uh, regular building. Well, there's a little sort of Flintstone feel, but more, more of it is that, that almost Roman ruins. Yeah. Flintstone is an official historic period, though, isn't it? This, I, I do not know where Louis got this. This just appeared, and it, we call it the serpent stone up here. Now, I have a few words this morning about baseball. When I brought students over, he would uh, he would order them up there. He said, "Before you take a tour of the garden, you must go up there and give your sermon." We're not bringing in a reliever. So one at a time, the students would go up and meekly say a few words, and he would he would chastise them about their meekness. He was the guy in the, in the rock garden. 
we used to, when I was a little smaller, we used to crawl up here and he had these big goldfish in the pond. And we used to bring our fishing rods and stuff and we'd catch the fish and reel them up and unhook them and throw them back in the pond. And uh, a couple times he caught us doing that, you know, and he'd yell at us and we'd take off running. And <laughs> <laughs> I was struck by his desire to just magically turn things, one thing into something else. It was about reincarnation and theosophy, I guess, which I don't really quite understand, but they said he might come back as a bird and hang out in the top of that. A lot of birds still fly around that. And so whenever I come to Don's place, I, I look up and always wonder, well, I always, hi, Louie. <laughs> no. well, it just marvels me how the man, even with 40 years of working, could do this. Because I've been working on it 25 years, 27 years now. I mean, it's, the rocks always win. <laughs> Talk about ambition. Besides sprucing up and clearing out Louie's heavy handiwork, Don has built his own house o' granite on the site. Though for safety reasons, he'd prefer you not come nosing around. So now our noses are pointed north towards a gloriously recreational land of lakes and bunions, including a giant talking one back there. But wouldn't you know, there's a small admission fee, so all of a sudden these cheap producers have a better idea in mind. People said this Paul, this Paul Bunyan statue didn't exist. Now we found Looking it. Look at him towering over the forest. Oh yeah, oh man. Oh. Hey, hey, oh. hey. Uh, leave it to weasels to lure me astray. Speaking of which, all this water does tend to attract a great many fans of fishing, which in turn has given Otis Lale, who lives not far from Brainerd, a great cottage industry, which he practices back here in his garage. My oldest son came home one day and said, can you make one of these, Dad? And I said, yeah, what is it? And he said, it's a fish decoy. They drop them down through a hole in the ice, and when the big fish comes in for lunch, they spear him. This one here is a pit bull dogfish. <laughs> Everybody can imagine a hammerhead fish. You've all ate tuna. Well, this is a canned fish. Anybody else making decoys that look like this? Nobody makes one that looks anywhere near like mine. Most of these guys, make a decoy that looks like it just come out of the lake. I make them more for fun. Some of them are used for decoys to catch fish. Most of them are used to catch tourists. There's a snake. This one's got springs in it. <laughs> this is virgin olive oil. Virgin, of course, means unused. And extra virgin means unused twice. <laughs> I want to know about this ice fishing, though. How dumb do you have to be to go sit in a, in a shack out on the ice and wait for something to happen? Well, <laughs> this excites some people, but it don't excite me. This one here is a Holstein cowfish. <laughs> this is Jesse Ventura. Ball head, big blue eyes, sharp teeth, and knows how to use them. I just take anything I can get and add to it. Are you always out in people's dumpsters looking for things? Where, do, where does uh, all this come from? I pay 50 bucks or so recycling tax, so I feel free to go up to their recycling bin and anything they got that I want to take. You really never know. One person will come along and look at your stuff and say, mm, what a bunch of crap. The next person comes along and says, I found an artist. So beauty is an eye of the beholder, they say, and, and you never know. Here's our chance to get lost in a big city. Yeah, we haven't done this the whole trip. Now Minnesota is not all lakes and farmlands. We are in fact passing through some of its urban grittiness on our way to find a woman named Thecla. 
Thecla's husband, Werner Munzis, was always putting stuff on their otherwise orderly German home. Werner's passed away now, but the stuff is still very much there to see. He did everything. He take a stone and he take a look. Oh, that's good for this. Then he goes and paint. He made the windmill, just like in Germany. If you take a look on the bottom, <laughs> he had so much, so much talent in his hands. He can do anything he'd dream about to do, he was doing. Oh, that's a water mill. When it rains. If it rains, it comes and turns around here. I love the mailbox. That is really yeah. something. He did a little work on the roof, too. Oh, yeah. That's a chariot, isn't it? Uh, yep. She watches the flag. She's the flag guard. Yep. Kind of looks like Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> <laughs> Got the little beret there. <laughs> That's a good one. That's kind of a deer hiding in the, the bushes. The deer. He likes horse, horses. That's a chicken that's He must have been fun to live with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was a good one. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thecla admits it's harder and harder to keep all this in shape. Just fine. And suddenly, those producers seem unusually willing to actually do a little work, which I should document for their permanent records. You know what? Turn your head here. I'm going to pull this. You got to. There you go. You got a leaf that he's fell still in your pulling, hair. He's still pulling weeds. He can't dressed. stop. <laughs> Once Randy Anyone? had figured out Werner's coffee Anyone? disposal Anyone? system. Even TV weasels. Oh, yeah. We oh. set out for the heart of the city like to play some catch along the banks of the mighty Mississippi while paying tribute to our favorite full-figured Minnesota twin. Look at that. Kirby Puckett. Show the good folks at home the Kirby Puckett. Kirby Puckett glove. Ah. Uh, we don't have any, but we're going to have to go shopping if, if Randy doesn't catch it. <laughs> well, they got that great mall here. What's so great about it? Whoa! <laughs> Once again, being luckier than good paid off as Mike chased that ball down the steps to our day's final destination. As two viewers of this show may recall, we've searched before for a museum of quackery. And finally, we have found it. Though Bob the Curator is off on sabbatical, there's no shortage here of clever contraptions made and marketed by all kinds of quacks and charlatans. A large percentage of the devices we have here were seized by the Food and Drug Administration. And so a number of them uh, are on permanent loan from the FDA or the American Medical Association. Randy is sitting in one of the most famous devices we have at the Museum of Questionable Medical Devices. This is an authentic orgone energy accumulator. This is one of the most low-tech devices we have, and nothing actually happens. What you're sitting under here is one of the most popular devices we have in the museum. It's a psychograph, and it follows the ideas of phrenology. And the theory is that your head is divided into about 30 different regions. Most people who worked as phrenologists rested their hands on your head, and that took about an hour. So this is a big labor-saving device. The idea is that you need your body to be shaken up regularly um, just to maintain your health. This is, this is part of the allure. It's one of several uh, bus developers that we have. Some things, the ads are just better than the, than the devices. That, that's true. I mean, I mean, look at that. You know, some of the posters we <laughs> that have. That heats me up. This is a blood rub. This is one of the most popular hair growers we have. How does this feel? Yeah, baby. And most people complain. You're the first person who's ever described this as actually feeling good. The idea is that by using violet lights, plus radio waves and magnetism. The machine reverses the aging process. Well, let's, let's fire it up and see if it's gonna work on her. 
Well, it's it already fired been working. Oh, it's running. Yeah, it's fired up. Running. Are you? But you, she's only getting younger on the bottom half. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. And you're saying this doesn't work? No, it doesn't work. You know, I don't think we've ever had it on this long. <laughs> Kirby bucket job. Hey, it's the Kirby bucket machine. Now, if being Whoa. bounced around actually took off pounds, after 5,000 miles in the back of a minivan, I'd weigh 110. And I don't, but I am still on the camera guy, signing off. Zebra! You just do the show, okay? Yeah. We're yeah. just going to yeah. leave. Let's Hand it go. over. Yeah. 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 Back here. Now it takes three of you. No, no, no just, you know, okay. there you go. It's We're your right. show now. Okay. We'll see you. You guys, you got a big ball. Carry on. Carry on. Uh, Watch out. Really now, Watch out for the bad motel. Yeah, see you, John. I hate getting whooped by eighth graders. Ow. I never even got past the eighth grade. So you think these eighth graders would have something better to do than yeah. wind on a ball of videotape? <laughs> Especially one that has foreign objects inside it. I don't for a second believe that that's pure tape. Well, what did you call me once, Don? Uh, the master of driving pastor. I think I just proved it again.